Jay, welcome to the CIO Zone. Thank you very much for uh, having me today. Perhaps you tell our audience a little bit about uh, your company and also uh, what your role is. Diversinet is an interesting company because we have uh, core competencies in encryption technologies and wireless technologies, and now we're bringing those to bear on the healthcare industry. And we kind of see it as the perfect storm. I was just about to use those terms. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> we have um, such deep knowledge of those areas that when we sit down with our uh, with organizations we can just solve so many issues for them in terms of um, taking advantage of the uh, the mobile channel for healthcare so these organizations can concentrate on what's the use cases the business cases versus having to figure out how am I going to figure out all these mobile phones all these app stores and figure out you know how to um, get all the data on the phone, how to figure out the security, the authentication models. Is. So that's what we do. We, we help organizations kind of jumpstart their initiatives uh, in terms of mobile healthcare. So in a sense, you're, you're sort of providing them a Lego set of things that can snap together. Right as opposed to things that you really like, like a set of boards and nails where you really have to start from scratch. We make it as easy as possible for them to uh, repurpose uh, any of the existing data sets they have, but almost as important is to be able to bring in third, third party systems. Unlike data, unstructured data could be coming from multiple different sources and be able to kind of funnel it down in, into the phone so it's meaningful, it's easy to use. To go back to the parlance of IT, the IT world as opposed to the health world, mm -hmm. uh, this would be, you're sort of creating a platform for them, uh, but it's more of a toolkit than an application? That's right, it's more a toolkit because as soon as I try to tell the CIO uh, of a healthcare company what they should be doing, they say that's not important to us. Help us understand how this can enable things that we may want to do in the future. Then they bring in the, the business unit managers, so whether it's uh, from the clinical side, whether it's from the claim side, whether it's from marketing, uh, uh, and, and uh, even the, you know, the CRM side, they define what their requirements are, and, and then we help them uh, translate that into this new, mo the new channel to take advantage of the mobile channel. Well, actually, it must be very refreshing to have a customer come to you understanding their requirements. Well, because that's often the, hard, the worst hurdle to uh, overcome. Well, the requirements are is that uh, it's you know health insurance is very competitive. Um, <clears throat> we have you know maximized our mail, telephone, call center, and web, and we want to extend our reach. So that's the extent of the requirements. Obviously, uh, DiversiNet didn't come into existence simply to serve this market. So you've been no. selling uh, more conventional, you might say, or more general purpose uh, requirements for other industries before this. We actually started, um, uh, our, our history is actually in the security business. We had spent, uh, the company has spent many years in the PKI business okay. and actually it had um, um, brought PKI to phones back five, six years ago when, of course, the phone platform was not very powerful and there wasn't a lot of bandwidth and PKI didn't lend itself well to it take 18 minutes to generate a key. It uh, wasn't very useful. So we uh, started with a blank piece of paper, uh, brought the wireless team in, which I was part of, and we said, you know what, we're going to put the consumer in the middle and we're going to look at other models where security and authentication is important. So we looked at the RSA model. At that time, they had about 18 million users. We're using these little key fobs to generate random numbers. Right. And that allowed uh, CFOs to do like a billion dollar uh, um, uh, cash transfer or uh, trades, whatever. We go, we said, well, why should CFOs be the only ones to have this kind of power in their hands when there are, uh, you know, approaching three billion consumers yeah. who actually have phones and more processing power than these little fobs. Correct. So what we did is we teamed up with a bunch of organizations and were founding members of the Initiative for Open Authentication, or OATH for short. And, for, and this is IBM, VeriSign, HP, and big league companies. And we authored a lot of the papers. And Twitter. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and came up with a way, uh, to uh, actually an algorithm, to compete against the RSA token. Yeah. And we were so successful at that, we actually yeah. licensed back some of our technology to RSA when we completed it. And then we moved on. So we took this uh, very uh, lightweight, powerful, but two-factor authentication token, and we took it to the, to the banks and the healthcare companies. And they said, as the, the, interesting, the most interesting response we got was from healthcare. They said, yes, we know mobile in five years is going to be 
everything. Uh, we don't know a lot about the mobile channel. We're terrified about security, privacy, authentication, permissions, and everything else. And but we, you know what? It is competitive, and we don't want you to generate another code which they have to go to a web, another medium, put a username, a password in, and then put this two-factor authentication code in. And they said, you guys don't know what you have. They said, you already solved the major problem. We said, what's that? Well, you figured out how to get security credentials on the phone. And why don't you just crack open the, the credentials, put the healthcare records inside, and then that will become the platform that, and how we want to use the, 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 uh, uh, the mobile channel. But then they looked me in the eyes and they said, you will keep me out of jail. And I'm serious. The CEO looked at me and said, you're going to keep me out of jail.